Yes, hello. Yes, hello. Thank you very much. Welcome to our uh, presentation. Um, before your presentation, I just want to say something. Um, we are on live on YouTube. Um, hello, everyone. Hello, I hello, I triple family. Um, we are here for our new masterclass series, and this is our uh, nine episode. And as you know, that we have a lot of uh, yes, hello. Yes. yes, hello, thank you very much. Welcome um, to our uh, uh, presentation. Um, we're so happy to welcome you, sir. Uh, I'm Emir Karaslan. I'm studying computer engineering in Bahçeşehir University. I'm activity committee member in IEEE Computer Society Turkey chapter. And I'm also a board member in IEEE Computer Society Bahçeşehir University. Uh, in previous session, as we mentioned that our main purpose to make these master class is inform scientists and engineers about recent and future technology. And we want to contribute to science and expand your horizon. Uh, in my opinion, uh, talking about future technologies is more exciting than talking recent technologies. And tonight, uh, I'm so excited because we're going to talk about 6G. Uh, our topic is uh, immersive services in 6G era, requirements and challenges. Today, uh, we have very valuable guests, uh, Professor Dr. Mayat Alakeli. And before uh, his presentation, I just want to say uh, something about his academic career. I want to inform you. Um, Professor Mayat Alakeli received the master degree in electrical and computer engineering from Concordia University and the PhD degree in electrical and computer engineering from the University of Ottawa. He was an instructor in systems and computer engineering department at Carleton University. He has been working with NOAA Inc. as a senior researcher and data scientist since, 20, since 2016. From 2018 to 2019, he was an assistant professor with American University of Middle East, Kuwait. From 2019 to 2021, he was the cybersecurity program director and uh, an assistant professor with the Faculty of Engineering in L. Ain University. He is the managing director of X Analytics Inc. Uh, Canada since uh, 2019. He is currently with the Machine Learning Department, Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. His current research interests include the application of AI and ML, connected and autonomous vehicles, blockchain solutions, and sustainable energy and data management. Uh, he was the recipient of many honors and awards. He received the 2020's Best Paper Award from Ad Hoc Networks Journal. He has chaired and co-chaired many IEEE conferences and workshops. He has served as a guest editor in many journals. Uh, he has also been appointed the co week of IEEE Comsoft TCE Letter 2020. He started his own spatial interest group, SIG, on blockchain and application, as well as Internet of Unmanned Aerial Networks. He is an IEEE senior member, ACM member, and professional engineer, Ontario. Uh, yes, sir. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we are so appreciated to welcome you. And uh, I just want to say something about our audience. I claim that um, you have a lot of questions about the topic and you can write your question uh, down below on the chat box. At the end of the presentation, I will ask my questions and then I will uh, ask your questions too. And uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, you can start uh, whenever you want. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Emir. Uh, I really appreciate it. And uh, if you can also give me the... Uh... The, I think I need, yes, um, I'll share my presentation at this moment. Uh, do you see my presentation, Emir? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, and uh, you see it in the full mode? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Emir. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity. And uh, first, let me uh, say a few words that uh, I, 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 I would like to thank the IEEE Turkey section for this uh, generous invitation to, uh, to have me and present uh, this interesting topic. Uh, and of course, for your master class and for, your, uh, for the organization of this event and the social media coverage. Uh, again, my name is uh, Mu'ayyad Al-Okili. I am with the Machine Learning Department at Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence. Uh, I also 
would like to today to present to you the topic of emerging immersive services, their challenges and requirements in the era of 6G or beyond 5G communication, which is, I believe it is very interesting topic, uh, given the fact that uh, we are witnessing the emerging of meta services and, you know, virtual environments all over our existing and real space. So uh, let me allow my presentation uh, by telling you a little bit about the table of content. So the, the main topic that's going to be covered today in this presentation is first the about us. I would like to talk a little bit about uh, our virtual space, artificially.ai at Mohammed bin Zayed University and the ICNET lab, intelligent communication and networking laboratory uh, also uh, team. Then I'll, I'll move uh, to the foundation of immersive technology. I'll, I'll, I'll do my best to explain what is immersive technology, in, including AR, VR, MR, and XR. Then uh, we will go through uh, together the application or the different type of application of immersive technology or immersive services, including education application, gaming, healthcare, and metaverse. Uh, we will also discuss uh, several use cases and of those applications. Then I'll talk about the processes and the steps in going from being in real environment into virtual environment, including the data collection, the transmission, communication, and management. Then we will talk about the requirement and challenges and their emerging issues, which is very interesting for people who would like to do research in this area. Then I will present one model that we have implemented in our team, which is uses two different technologies, blockchain for security and federated learning for privacy for resource allocation inside immersive services. Okay, uh, starting by introducing my team. Uh, again, as I said, I am the founder and the director of the Artificial Lab, which is a virtual lab that we have established recently at uh, Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence here in United Arab Emirates. Uh, Artificial Lab is to stand for uh, tra transforming, learning, enabling application and processes of world leading AI and machine learning uh, you know, uh, problems. Uh, the lab and its members and the project that the lab is represented can be found from the link at the bottom. Uh, similarly, in this lab, we have uh, similarly in uh, similar to this uh, lab, we have I have also created another lab called ICNET Lab, Intelligent Communication and Networking Laboratory, uh, where we have different two project and different uh, members uh, at each lab. So whenever you are interested uh, to look at our project members, partners, and the, you know, the achievements and our latest news, uh, please don't hesitate to visit our lab and drop us a message if you have any question or concern. Uh, in addition, uh, Mohammed bin Zayed University of Artificial Intelligence is the world's first AI university specialized in research and graduate level education. So if you also, if you are interested in applying uh, for graduate studies, master or PhD, please don't hesitate to visit uh, the university website and look at our programs. We have full covered, uh, you know, scholarship to fully paid uh, with salary for master and PhD student. Uh, now coming into my research interest, I would like to talk that in the, in, the, in, the, in the left side of the presentation, you can see the, you know, the sentiment of the keywords of the most, you know, research that I'm conducting recently. And you can see that the AI, IoT, 6G, blockchain, UAVs, uh, you know, connect them autonomous vehicles are the most interesting application that I'm working on at these days. And we have also different research projects and interest in, in our lab. Uh, one project is related to enabling emerging services for online learning post pandemic era. We have another project related to the popular connected and autonomous vehicle. Another project is also related to the immersive services, which is related to digital twin for intelligent context healthcare system. And of course, uh, I, I, my, my popular area that I'm focusing on these days, which is related to the blockchain application and energy trading and energy systems in general. Uh, let's just start our presentation by, uh, by a brief introduction about immersive services. So the first time, guys, if you are, if you are hearing about immersive services or services in general, I mean, I would like first to, to, to ask you, what do you mean by immersive? What, what, what does immersive keyword stand for? And like immersive services, is immersive services is different than let's say service provisioning or regular services and how we can distinguish between regular services or immersive services. These days, many people are, are talking about the new generation of services or what's so-called immersive services uh, or how you can transform your digital asset into being immersed. So, however, 
in order to be immersed or in order for us to answer the, the, the meaning of the immersive services, we have to answer three basic questions. The first question, uh, what do we mean by immersive and do we really need it in, in, our to, in, in today's application? The second question that we have to answer is it, what does it take for my uh, current application to become an immersive? And the last one, what are the requirements and the challenges that I have to uh, endure or intake to you know, uh, 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 employ emergent services in my system? So before going further into the, the meaning of immersive and the meaning of immersive service or advanced services provisioning, uh, first, let me talk about the foundation of immersive services. What are the main application of immersive services? Then we go back and we answer those questions relatively. So uh, the users in this environment or the immersive services can be immersed in different environment depending on the use application, but the most commonly you know, the most commonly, uh, you know, uh, interest of application in this domain is the communication application, entertainment, learning, and the trading. And we will go into the details of every one of these applications soon. So first, uh, let me introduce the main immersive technologies that people are experiencing and using these days. And those are mainly the virtual reality, the augmented reality, and the mixed reality. And there is a fourth category that we are witnessing these days. It is what we call extended reality. So let's first start by talking about what are those uh, reality application? What, what is the difference between our reality, our space, our own space, the reality that we are living, living in or what's so-called real reality? Then let's explore and see how this is different from augmented or virtual or mixed mixed reality. And the, the, main, the main focus here in those new re realities is the, is the user centric. So where is the user in those reality and what, what is his role? Uh, so in order for us to understand also the emerging concept of immersive services, we have first to explore the meaning of those, the differences and how we can use it these days. So first, uh, if you can see, the first one is the virtual reality. And you can see from the video, that the current user, he was in his room and he wanted to experience the virtual reality. So he has to use a, a mountain head or what we call head mountain display. And this head mountain display is uh, capable of uh, transforming his current environment into a new virtual environment, into a different space or a different valiant, uh, planet and so on. So with the VR or the, the head mountain, the user is completely shut down from his current environment and he is being transferred with an illusion into a new world being surrounded by content or a new content from his from his choice by creating this illusion of reality the vr allows the, you know the user to better understand or to, to better experience a new objects in the new environment so what is this new environment of course it's a computer generated virtual environment using 360 videos and images where the user is completely immersed Okay, and this is three world or what we call virtual world that is totally disconnected from his real world or where he is sitting, whether in his apartment, in his classroom, or in his work space. The new generated, you know, a, a new environment is can only be preserved through the dedicated headset, the head mounting display, or what we call the, the VR headset or helmet. And this virtual environment we are witnessing these days in different applications such as the entertainment, gaming. Uh, education or link application, tourism and medicine and so on. And we will talk about this in more detail soon. Oh, okay. Now moving into the second type of immersive application, which is the augmented reality or AR. So now we have the uh, virtual reality. Okay. The virtual reality is about moving you from your real reality and placing you, okay, or shutting down you from your reality and moving you into a new reality why the augmented reality is focusing on placing your current reality or re real reality by injecting a new object that you can interact with. And the most or the greatest example of AR is the popular, uh, the, the, the popular uh, you know, uh, social media application, Snapchat and, uh, and uh, uh, Snapchat and the most popular game is Pokemon Go. So where we can see in those applications, as you can see from the images here, the digital images are presented on the top of the real world. So basically the augmented reality is the user, he's still experiencing his own reality, but with the use of, let's say a helmet or his mobile phone, he can interact with deal with different objects 
that inserted in his own reality. So the real environment, the plus new object injected into this new environment is presented the new framework of augmented reality. So uh, wearing a dedicated headset is, is not strictly necessary in the augmented reality. So he does not have to wear the headset in this new reality. On the contrary, just using his mobile phone or any Google glasses, he can experience the augmented reality. Now, how the augmented reality uh, in, in application happens? So it, it's basically the combination between the real world uh, environment and a, a virtual object that is created by this application can visualize this new 2D object in his real uh, uh, 2D environment and visualize it automatically. So the first, you have to capture the image or the video of the environment. You have to analyze the image, recognize the real object in it, their location, their size, and, and their distance. Then you have to inject your new object or the virtual object that you intend to place it in the real environment uh, for this environment for various objects. In the case of Pokemon Go, the game is injecting the new object so user can interact you know, and catch those new avatars. Uh, in reality, also, uh, this, uh, this application is, is, has been popular in the past uh, few years and has been uh, employed in various sectors, such similar to education, culture, tourism, and medical. But more importantly, the market of AR is, has been witnessing a huge boost in the healthcare sector with $77.0 billion reaching in 2025. So uh, uh, similar, is, so, so a nutshell, the combination of real world and virtual object is the one is creating the AR visualized images. So now the mixed reality, and which is the third type of the uh, uh, reality or the, the, uh, the immersive service application, it is basically a combination between the VR and the AR. So, Basically, the mixed re reality, it's somehow a combination between AR and VR, which is like VR, MR also use a head mounting display. Unlike VR, how however, a user is not shut down from the rest of the world. He can still interact and deal with the environment. And instead of the head mounting display, it is more like a pair of glasses that overlays the digital images on the top of you or on the top of the, the uh, you know, real environment. So you can see that, for example, in this uh, in this picture, that the user he is able to he's he's in his real environment. He can see his room, the surrounding of the room, the TV, the the wall, and everything on the wall. And still, he can interact with a new object injected into his real environment. So user can manipulate those objects by changing their location, size, shape, routing, moving them around, and so on, so so forth. Uh, the mixed reality environment uses different type of headsets. The most popular one is Microsoft HoloLens. Uh, moving forward, uh, the mixed reality, as I said, it's the combination between uh, both uh, AR and VR, and has different features and characteristics of, we have different features and characteristics of mixed reality. First, the, the mixed reality is very important in case of tracking the strategy to monitor the user real view, position, motion, and so on and so forth. Also, in, in mixed reality, various precise calculation and critical decision has to be taken using whether algorithmic application or AI decision-based systems to produce a high level of credibility in terms of what is the next move, what is the next scene. Uh, not to mention that in mixed reality, we are dealing with real scenes and from real environment. So the, the, you have to quantify this object, you have to calculate their size, your position, you have to track the user movement from one location to another location, he's moving. The distance between the real object, you know, and the users and the other augmented object. And in real time, you have to do the analysis, the decision making on those objects, and the scene generation and scene transformation from one location to another. So the mixed reality somehow, it is not an easy task. It is a complicated task and require uh, a, quiet, uh, a, a quiet task and effort. So now we talked at the beginning that what is immersive? What do we mean by immersive? What would do one when we, when we immerse a service and provide it to the user? What do we mean by that? And we said, first, let's explore the foundation of the uh, immersive services application. And we spoke about the VR, the AR and the MR. And we explain the differences between those. In this table, we can see the differences between the three different applications. Uh, I, I don't want to go through every one of those particularly. I mean, as you know, this is recorded and you can go, you can go back to it at any time and, and see it. But however, we can we can see from those that 
the, the user is the centric focus point in those application. Without the user, those application cannot you know, function individually. Uh, also, we have to emphasize on the, on the importance of the mixed reality of when, when emerging and when using these services. So the mixed reality is not an easy environment to deal with. And we're gonna see in the, in the next couple of slides how the mixed reality require more precision, more synchronization and more you know, credibility and high level of interaction with the 3D object and the users. So uh, the following figure also uh, show the involvement of the reality in the new reality. So we have what we call real reality on the left hand side top and we have the computer generated environment or this is the new virtual reality. So where is the user involvement here and how the user is, in, is involved? So you are here and you can look at the virtual reality is what is the computer you know, algorithm generated for you and a place you in. So the closest to you is that augmented reality, the AR, where you are still in your reality and you are still can see what's surrounding you and what is being around you and you can play with the object, interact with it and the mixed reality somehow in between the augmented reality and the virtual reality. So what's close to you is the AR. MR, it's somehow in midpoint between AR and VR, and VR is the virtual environment where are completely transmitted into shutdown and transmitted into a completely new environment. So now let's come to the interesting one, which is the extended reality, or what this is what we call eventually the base of the metaverse environment. Uh, extended reality is the umbrella of all reality applications. So instead of keeping coming up every day with a new reality application or virtual reality application, so they said, okay, this is enough. Let's have just one for all. And whatever new application comes to it or any different type of VR, AR comes to it, it can be just classified under extended reality. I have also to mention guys, VR and AR, they have different subcategories uh, comes with them. I didn't, I wouldn't want to talk about it here but uh, you, we can ex explore it in another presentation. Now, extended reality, let, let's see how where's extended reality. First, the, we, we understand what is virtual reality. We understand what is augmented reality. You know, the combination of both produce for me the mixed reality and anything that comes in the place of VR, MR or R, AR, it's the extended reality. So the extended reality is the spectrum of any joint or disjoint of the virtual reality application in this umbrella. It's a smart real reality supported by the digital world and real life interaction. So from the following figure, so we can see that this figure that we have showed before, where is the ex extended reality? The extended reality is any interaction, okay? So as you can see that the figure shows the involvement of the real reality in the new reality, whether it is AR, MR or VR or any combination of any of these reality. So uh, the level of being close to the real reality is the most important here to notice. Okay. Uh, continuing in the extended reality, we, we're gonna see how extended reality is very important. So the new reality or the new reality that I'm experiencing from this extended reality, it is the digital environment that I'm interacting with plus the physical world that I'm placed in which is produced for me the extended rea the XR uh, environment, which is highly depend on the human machine interaction. So there is a human, there is a machine and the human is the central focus point of this machine to interact and make a decision and produce this decision and move forward with it. Uh, the extended reality has a big impact in the traditional working environment, okay? Uh, and the entertaining, the, the way we consume services and so on. XR devices are very accessible as needed. Uh, headset should include sensors, different type of cameras, gaze tracking, accelerator, microphones to interfere with the user in their digital world. Now, before moving into the statistics, let's sum up that the, the, the immersive services, it is basically the birth of the extended reality where the services provided to the user is no longer standalone services based in, two, in, two D, in 2D or single user Q and A answers. And on the contrary, it's more of an inter interactive environment where it's a place the user in the middle of this environment where he get to choose, where he get to ask, where he get to interact and deal with other similar, you know, uh, you know uh, entities in this environment that interact with him similarly. So 
Now, guys, coming into the statistic, from this statistic, I can show a very interesting, you know, uh, study that shows in 2019, $18.6 billion only was the consumption or the market growth rate on extended reality application, while in 2030, the expected uh, moving growth will reach up to 1.005.9 billion, you know, market growth rate, which is an increase by 48.3%, as we can see from the figures. And we can see that in the Middle East area and the Asia area in general in the figure, we can see that we have a fast growing market from 2020 to 2030 as expected, where the largest market used to be in North America in 2019. So the question how, the question here, why we have this huge growth that we are seeing just starting from 2019 and above? What do you think that has happened internationally that uh, call for a huge shift from let's say uh, five to 10% interest in this technology into 48.3% in the technology. And the answer of course, because of the Corona uh, out separate or the white separate. So the, the, the entire world realized after the Corona white separate that the current service providing mechanism or platforms is no longer enough for the user to be interested in these services, especially the education sectors. And when we have been asked to move into online education system over one night, the only available, uh, the only available application for the whole community was a couple of application and the most popular was Zoom and Teams and uh, Cisco WebEx and those application, it just was on a traditional learning system, not equipped fully for interaction uh, environment or, uh, you know, interesting environment for student in different ages, different, you know, groups. It was not equipped for exams or online exam and not equipped for the whole new generation era. So now then the, the community all over the world realized the need for a new type of services, which was the extended reality market. Uh, we can see also from the following statistic that from like the global XR market in US billion dollar have moved by 4.8% just from a couple of years into the next com coming years. So this is a new interesting fact. And if we want to dive into the, you know, into the type of the application that this technology is interesting for, we can see that in total, we have 35 billion, okay, in 2025 that has been in, dust, in, in, the, in, the, in the XR industry has been spent on this application. As you can see from the heated map that the healthcare is the highest interest in this application with a 16.1 billion in the public sector comes after this engineering, real estate, retail, military application. And also there is an interest in the education. And when it comes from the consumer side, we can see that we have 18.9 billion interest in video ga games, live event, video ent entertainment, and so on. So now, by now, uh, I believe we uh, all agree on the importance on immersive services. We understand what is the main foundation application for immersive services applications. Now, I think it is the time to move to the next chapter of this presentation, which is the, talking about different immersive technology application or the most popular and well known application that completely these days rely on immersive technology. So we'll talk about first gaming, then we'll talk about education, healthcare, then we'll talk about a very interesting application. I believe everyone is interested to hear about it, which is the metaverse. Okay, gaming. I mean, I, I do, do I really have to motivate, you know, the, 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 the gaming uh, sector with the, you know, with the use of extended reality or it is motivated enough? I believe all of us, if it's not, ourselves, maybe our brothers, our sister, our, ch our, our children, they are already using, you know, uh, the new generation of computer game, which is basically relies on XR. As you can see from the, from the images these days, different type of games, they are using different type, you know, of uh, a head mounting display, different type of sensors, different type of rackets to interact with the game in the, their virtual environment. So uh, for example, gaming can be VR and AR like Pokemon Go, or it can be mixed reality like other type of gaming. So the VR gaming console or a PlayStation, for example, uh, Quest 2 is, is the best example to show how the new generation of gaming is completely relies on the new you know, extended reality environment. So uh, in, in this environment, we can witness various gaming consoles is being come into effect that's basically 
the, because of the birth of the extended reality, we can have different attraction parks, even in malls on real in, in, in real businesses where you go into those parks just to play with people all over the world that you don't know of, you don't know where they are or who are they. Then the, the idea of the game also is to immerse the gamer in the game and keep him more engaged and more focused by using those sensors around him, microphone and cameras, various technique and sensors that the gamers can use to make him more attractive and focused inside the game itself. And this is completely new generation of, you know, of services that has not been provided in the traditional gaming system where just people used to buy the game, buy the CD and play on the game on a single computer, single user, or, you know, online user. The second sector here, which is a very interesting sector, and I believe everyone is interested is in the education. The education sector and the whole extended use, the extended reality in education sector is basically was after the, you know, the widespread of uh, coronavirus. And myself, I have a big grant on the use of the extended reality application post the uh, coronavirus pandemic to provide or create a new application where the user, he can use this application in his classroom or from his home and create more interactive environment for him to replace the current traditional environment. So with, with the new thing, we can see that the, 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 the we can see from the images here that I don't have to be in the classroom every day okay, to, to preserve knowledge or to meet my friends or my classmate or to see my teacher in, in a real time in a three model or to interact with a three model that exists, you know, in the classroom. And the contrary, I can immerse all the students into a virtual environment. I can immerse all the objects that needed in the classroom into the same virtual environment. And I can, you know, I can have those users or have those students immersed in this environment learn in an exciting uh, way and provide an exciting learning experience without worry about the burden of that there is multiple students for one teacher or multiple you know uh, a student using the same you know the same resources on the contrary i can have as much as original okay real or virtual teacher or digital teachers in this environment interacting with the student on the go or in real time. So with this application, we, we see that we were moving the user from the current learning pandemic the, in the current, the current learning mechanism into a better and deep, uh, you know, uh, 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 system that will provide more understanding of the study concepts and the system. So here, the, the mystery of the complex concept can be visualized in a simpler way. We can organize in this classroom virtual field trips into all the labs or all the museums all over the world while the user, he does not have to move or travel. And we can provide a more, you know, interactive uh, learning environment metaverse, okay, for all the students while they are still at their houses. I mean, another example in this environment that I don't, if I, if I feel sick as a, as a university student or, you know, middle or early university, I don't have to, you know, completely be away from the classroom. I can still, this my student, they are in the, their classroom and I can have the metaverse, you know, a, a head mounting display while I am at house and be with them virtually at the same time. So I don't have to miss my education. So immerse, the, the idea here that the immersive services for education is fundamental and important and it will ease and will provide more resources for a student and you know it will improve the uh, the experience of the instructor and the student at the same time. Uh, another big application here that I want also to talk about that uses immersive services is the healthcare system. The healthcare system is a big contributor and the first contributors into you know deploying the immersive or the extended the immersive application into their system. So immersing the healthcare professionals mainly and you know the patient. Uh, combine both together in one uh, application also would improve the, you know, the health operation, would improve the understanding of the healthcare professional and will provide more services and more importance uh, and, and, and more, uh, you know, uh, opportunities for those uh, patients and, you know, uh, healthcare professional provider at the same time. So the immersive services here could provide for me a training healthcare professionals uh, virtually 
It can also help in the telemedicine, in the providing accurate diagnosis, uh, better therapist, better and you know virtual advanced therapist all over the world, and so on. So in the next set of the first slide, I will talk about the uh, health, the, the those uh, exact uh, cases. So we can see that from the images that with the training of the healthcare professional, I don't have to worry about resources, cost, you know, I don't have to worry about all of the physical assets that the hospital these days, they worry about it. And, you know, they are, you know, uh, bonded about it. On the contrary, when I have a virtual environment, uh, I can provide as much as uh, of a human body uh, uh, interaction and reaction for a healthcare professional to understand and, uh, you know, provide their insight and their feedback and their training on those, you know, uh, on those, you know, uh, in those virtual environments. Uh, also, we can provide a tremendous replacement to the traditional learning strategy and exams and, you know, tests that uh, our uh, employees go through. Uh, we can also solve issues related to the cost and the availability of medical machines and patients with employing, uh, uh, you know, uh, immersive uh, services for training uh, healthcare professionals. Uh, the second one we will talk about is the telemedicine. In the telemedicine, we, 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 we can see that you don't have to be physically present at the time of the operation in order to, you know, provide the operation. Uh, you can virtually present to see what's happening in the operation, which is can save time, cost, and, you know, also it is important to ensure that there is no infection that can provide it to the, you know, to the patient during the operation. So immersing the medical professional in the war, in, in a world where they are able to interact and utilize the organs of their patients remotely, this is a huge, you know, a step up in, in this environment. Uh, we can remotely control some robots to perform surgery uh, in a remote, uh, you know, or distant location. We can guide and cooperate other professionals to participate, you know, in the same telesurgery at the, at the same time while it's being uh, provided. Another one is the accurate diagnosis. Uh, one of the fundamental issues in diagnosis these days is that we don't have a better uh, visualization of the human or the patient organs. So with the using extended reality and providing, you know, the healthcare profession, which is doctor or nurses or, you know, uh, a health provider, a service provider engineer, uh, a visualization of the patient organ in real time so this real-time visualization of would be uh, present the situation to those you know uh, healthcare giver in in a better way so they can understand what is the issue behind this uh, uh, this uh, sample and you know they they better assess and you know they provide their assessment on on the case so also the uh, the extent uh, the immersive services uh, in the healthcare uh, uh, diagnosis it also provide continuous learning from the previous mistake and improve it in future events. Uh, further uh, to this, the last one is the service and the you know immersive and extended reality application in, in, uh, in therapies, it's a big contributor because various physiological and physical therapies can provide it to them to make their life and their journey into the, you know, the rehabilitation process is easy and interesting. Okay. Now we covered three main application guys that heavily rely on extended reality and immersive services. We, we talked at the, end, at the beginning about the education sector, we talked about the healthcare, and we talked about the gaming. And the last application that I wanna talk about today is the metaverse. And I believe everyone is interested in the metaverse and what's going on around our world and the metaverse. And let me, let me just say this statement right now, guys, that metaverse is coming into our houses, into our workspaces, into our universities, into our phones sooner than we imagine, whether we like it or we, we don't. I, I have lots of discussion with my colleagues and there is lots of resistance from all the school people that do we really need, need metaverse and the, and the success of metaverse, but whether we like it or not, guys, metaverse is like the internet. Uh, 20 years old, can we imagine that we will witness uh, your life without an internet? We didn't have an internet uh, 20 years ago and nobody uh, would imagine or bet that without the internet, nothing will be as easy as we have, as we experience these days. And I'm, I'm confident to say that Metaverse is a disruptive technology. It will be in all 
in all lifestyle that we have every day in our school, in our you know workspaces, in our houses, and we will be compelled to use it whether we like it or not. So better if we are intelligent enough to understand what is this technology, get ourselves into this technology as quick as possible and try to contribute to it as much as we can. So what is uh, Metaverse? Metaverse is basically, guys, it's a mixed reality, okay? But at a large scale and with multi, you know, purpose function. So it's a new network of a 3D virtual world focused on the social connection between different, you know, object or what they call it avatar, uh, or we can call it a 3D universe that combine multiple different spaces interacting with each other at the same time. So those spaces, they can be government, they can be industry, they can be social, they can be individuals, and those it's the spaces, okay, uh, they will be able to work together, meet, game, socialize, any kind of application can be provided in this a new network of a 3D virtual world. So uh, here we have to also to understand uh, something that there's two things, there's two meta. There's meta, which is the keyword that's uh, Facebook that use it to represent their, their new services. And there is the meta, which is inspired from the idea of building an, a metaverse or a virtual environment world resource. So meta and metaverse is not the same, is represented two different things. So now let's agree on, on the idea of the metaverse. It is basically allowing multiple users from different locations and at different you know, areas all over the world to be virtually present in the same virtual environment of a highly interactive environment using XR technology and be able to interact and provide service to one another. So the image is shows four different people in four different locations, one in office, one in his, uh, you know, in, in a restaurant, one in the park, one in his workspace, and they are all able to meet and provide service in a virtual meeting and talk and maybe work together in what we call metaverse environment. So the metaverse in general, uh, providing different opportunities uh, to, to, the, to the, our existing space these days. They are providing opportunities for virtual classroom, for our meetings, for social event, concerts, gaming championship, musical concert, and so on. And it's worth noting that various technologies will get the advantage of the metaverse, but metaverse is basically can or will, must or must, I can't say with confidence, must take the advantage of the cryptocurrency where it will be the main currency to be dealt with. So remember, we are in a virtual environment with so many people or so many service provider, you don't know, you don't know them. So you cannot, you know, uh, you cannot trust them easily. You cannot trust them in their further business. So you need uh, kind of a technology that it will preserve your identity and it will secure their system and communication, which is, this is basically, we're talking here blockchain and the cryptocurrency systems. Okay, in this example, we can see that there's two people, they would like to play a game or they would like to interact with one another. Each one of them here in his house. So basic things to be conducted here is to detect the scene, track the motion uh, at each location, report it into a virtual environment, perform a scene analysis, combination analysis and generation of the new scene and provide it into you know, a virtual environment or what we call the metaverse. And this virtual environment will be shared with the port parties at the same time synchronize it, detect it in real time continuously and provide it uh, uh, into those two, uh, two individuals. Uh, it's worth mentioning that also in this environment, any people can join in the go and any people can, can leave also in the go. Uh, the most two popular use cases, uh, uh, metaverse use cases is the immersive classroom and the immersive uh, musical concerts. So the immersive classroom, it's basically that you don't have to put now a student in, in a Zoom meeting where he is either sleeping or he is, you know, uh, is not focused and, you know, is not, you know, an engaged or is not connected into your classroom. On the contrary, you can use now uh, metaverse use case in a classroom where you students from various locations are teleported in a virtual learning environment with their teacher, with their equipment and resources, and they, you know, meet to communicate and work together in this virtual or metaverse environment. They are able to gather knowledge, this different paradigms in, in an interactive manner and uh, work together in this regard. Another one is the musical concert where it is the same concept. Different people from different the world, they don't have to travel to watch the musical concert. On the contrary, you can bring this musical concert into the metaverse environment 
all the participants they can you know join this metaverse environment and you can uh, interact and watch the, the this musical concerts in the go so the main the main objective here is integrating several participants from various and different locations all over the world into an interactive realistic virtual environment that's why here remember when you're talking metaverse real time uh, uh, reliable environment so here you have to remember that this environment has to be flexible environment okay now how far we're talking metaverse and we're talking about big dream and big vision so the question here how far are we from this technology are we really far i don't think so because just recently as if you heard that dubai virtual asset regularity authority here in uae have they have made their first depute in the metaverse environment, this is what so-called sandbox, with establishment of its metaverse headquarters in the dynamic virtual world environment. So now governmental services will be provided in the metaverse platforms. Governmental governmental operation will be conducting in the metaverse environment. Not only Dubai, also big, also gigantic uh, tech provider like China depute also in the metaverse. So this is also worldwide, it's big, and it's coming sooner uh, than later. Okay. Now, guys, we explored the meaning of immersive services. We talked about the different application of immersive services. We understand the difference between real reality and extended reality with their different technologies. We talked about the most important, you know, application that relies on immersive services and a little bit about their requirements and about their procedures. Now let's talk about the requirement. What are the requirements, okay, that I have to provide in this environment continuously in real time in order to make it real and interesting for the user? And the most I can see here, uh, I can say here that the most three important, there is so many, of course, requirements, the most three important Require requirement that you have to provide in this environment is first synchronization with real time responses and high precision. So, scene detection and scene movement and scene reporting and scene, you know, a 3D re, uh, re, uh, object regenerating for multiple or thousand, maybe millions of users in metaverse environment has to be done in real time. It has to be teleported the response also in real time. And with high precision, having those three peculiarities in sub millisecond environment is not easy. It is not possible, and it under lots of you know of uh, lots of uh, processes. That's why if we need to understand how I can provide high synchronization in real time environment with high responses in real time and also high precision, you know, and reliable, uh, you know, responses. I have to understand what are the processes that I'm, I, I need to go from to understand this challenge. Mainly, we're talking about four processes. The first process is, is about the data collection, which is related to the real scene collection from various users, their position tracking, their gesture capturing, and the data processing and data generation, starting from seed analysis, object detection, object reconstruction, object transmission into virtual object, you know, creation, special mapping, 3D construction. And the last one is the scene visualization, which is sending or generating this new scene from the real environment into the new, you know, metaverse environment. Uh, those two data processing and scene generating, it's a processing that has to be done remotely, guys, while the, the processes from the data networking into the scene visualization, this is what we call network transmission the process. Here we are looking at so many open issues that guys that is still the research community and you and I, we have to work together and to answer those, you know, questions. For example, how to collect data, how to process the data, and how to ensure that the, you know, the responses in this data is real and is not malicious. How to send the collected data into, you know, remote location to be processed. And what is our, are those remote locations? It is edge communication, it is cloud communication. Uh, where to process the data is another big question. How to increase the efficiency and the reliability in this system. Uh, what kind of approaches that you have to use? Uh, should I rely on more uh, algorithmic approach or should I rely on more AI-based approach and so on, so forth? So here I, I will go into each one of these stages or processes uh, quickly 
uh, for the sake of the time. Uh, I, I can also uh, provide some papers that uh, 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 recently we had also a book that we have wrote it in these topics and we can also provide it after the presentation if you want to dig into those uh, environment. So in the data collection phase, we, there's two basic information that we need to care about is the real scene generation and the user just here, you know, tracking and, and, and you know, following. In, this, in, this, uh, in these two steps, uh, the XR scene has to be detect the real object, their distance, their uh, you know motion and gesture through cameras and sources embedded in the heads in the headset or the head mountain display. Uh, for the user gesture, you have to translate the input that is requested from the user or the multiple users that has to be detected using the sensor or the cameras and has to be transmitted into that metaverse virtual environment. In the data collection, the data collection usually done into three from three different types of sensors, either the biofeedback bio and the eye motion sensors, the handheld trackers in the case of the gaming, the biofeedback in the case of the healthcare operations, and in the camera-based tracking gestures in case of the cameras for the entertainment, you know, or, or real meetings inter interaction. And the last one is the data transmission, which is mainly related on the how we can generate data, how we can process data, and how we can visualize data and it is heavily rely on communication technology. And in this communication technology, it's worth noting that it is mainly relies on heavy requirement in terms of delay, bandwidth, and you know, computing capabilities. Remember, here we're not talking about just one user or a few users. We're talking about a new whole, uh, you know, virtual world that is accessible to all. Anyone from the whole world, whole world can join this world. He can buy asset in it and he can provide service to those assets. So in this, you know, a new, a new uh, reconstructed world, all movement, deformation, and retransformation should be captured, analyzed, should be added to the, the 3D scene environment, and it should be shared or reshared with all the participants all in real time. So integrating several, you know, participants from various locations in a virtual environment is a challenging task because this environment has to be flexible, it has to be responsive, it has to be reliable, and, you know, all with the, you know, validating the concerns of the peers of the users being engaged in this environment. So uh, the data transmission or, you know, uh, talking into the beyond 5G uh, communication networks or the 6G networks, it is one of the enablers, the big enablers that, you know, made the dream or the vision of this technology comes true. So here, when we talk about the data transmission, this technology has to rely mainly on the 6G technology or the beyond 5G type of networks to deliver the services because providing, for example, an 8K 360 video, which is a rate that should exceed 60 or even 120 frames per second for thousands, not maybe even millions of users in second, this cannot be provided in the current network infrastructure that we are talking about. Now we are talking about the new infrastructure, 6G infrastructure that can transmit, you know, a gigabit of data and sub sub milliseconds. So in such cases, without object mating, several terabytes of data is expected to be generated. So how we can allocate and reallocate this, you know, bandwidth. So here the statement efficient communication technology to transport this data with the highest precision and lowest delay is needed. So here, advanced approaches such as an AI-based resource allocation and network slicing capabilities is highly leading in this environment. Okay, when it comes guys into the data processing, a huge amount of that has to be processed. So there is heavy post-processing phase and there is heavy pre-processing phase as well, including the data analysis and data processing and data preparation, filtering and trust coding, you know, and the security of the data, uh, the content generation on all of these, is another burden, you know, on, on this communication technology. So the analysis of this require a comprehensive visibility of the data for the user. It has to also be uh, uh, in an autonomous system using AI machine learning based strategies to predict the user movement behavior, generate the virtual object in, in, in a reaction. It has to be uh, in a 3D reconstruction environment. So here we are looking at a huge requirement, including high computing efficiency, faster processing, optimal resource allocation, precision of real-time responses, high interactivity of various participants in this environment. Now, another big question to be answered here, which approaches should be adopted in this case? Where to process this data? 
and where to store the needed data in this environment. So those are still open questions to be answered. And in order to, uh, to answer us, we need a resource for a strategy using advanced paradigm to reach the highest level of efficiency and accuracy at the same time. So here we have the edge computing environment with different distributed approach that can be applied with lower delay with cooperative computing and closer to the end user or non end user mechanism in this case. So this is takes a distributed or a various edge node which can allocate schemes in this environment. So the, the edge computing architecture that we are experiencing these days, it's, it's a multi-layer, uh, you know, hierarchical computing system that goes from the cloud into the edge into, you know, the IoT devices or, you know, the, the virtual environment devices or participant at the, you know, at the end device layer. So in this environment, there is also huge, lots of challenges in terms of the heterogeneity of the devices at the edge device layer with their different, different devices with different capabilities related to the different stakeholders. So that's why this environment has to be flexible, has to be responsive, and it has to be highly reliable and you know, precise. So we looking here at flexible distributed, we are looking of a strategy that the new framework that's need to be adopted or need to be deployed here, uh, it has to be flexible, a flexible environment or flexible distributed framework has to be self-adapted and has to be autonomous to any changes that might happen in this environment. Uh, what are the challenges that we are looking here? We are looking at different challenges. We're looking at challenges related to the, uh, the, the need for a, st a standard dedicated AI-based model dedicated for this environment. We are looking at a dynamic network computing resources allocation issue that has to be proactive and reactive and adaptive at the same time. We are looking also at security and privacy issue to, to produce, you know, to predict, you know, those environment, those data that are produced from virtual environment, users virtual environment into the virtual, you know, metaverse world. So here we need to create a trust in this technology uh, by providing more uh, efficient and secure mechanism uh, that adapt a critical, you know, uh, uh, that adapt a critical, you know, uh, schemes that can, you know, ensure the users who is going to use this environment that's in this environment is trusted. Now, the, the last part of this presentation, guys, which I'm going to go through it, is the, uh, the our, uh, you know, model that we have built in our published paper in IEEE Globe Comet 2022 proceeding. The paper is available online and can be found at the end of this presentation, which is a blockchain and federated learning for network resource management for interactive immersive service. So the idea here that uh, uh, we propose the system uh, to uh, manage uh, resource, you know, network resources that intended for interactive emerging services. And at the same time, we provided the use of a blockchain for secure access into those services and the federated learning to ensure, you know, that the users, the user's data is being private and, you know, is being uh, built at an edge level, not at a cloud level. So the contribution, the objective here is to use different platforms, heterogeneous, you know, devices with a flexible uh, distributed framework for self-adaptive, you know, and uh, uh, self-adaptive scheme or platform that able to react quickly and autonomously, uh, you know, uh, provide uh, resource management at the edge. So the contribution of the paper was uh, to propose a blockchain and federated learning based system to train the local data uh, on on a global vision about, uh, you know, uh, to train the local data uh, to generate the global, you know, federated learning average model, uh, to design a distributed self-adaptive decision-making mechanism, which is the focal point of the papers, and simulate the provided, you know, or the proposed uh, system, and uh, learn more about the, 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 you know, the delay, the CPU consumption, and the power usage, and, you know, try to reload or, you know, redistribute the load inside the network, you know, efficiently. So this is the uh, system model overview, which is relies on the hierarchical system that goes from the network's uh, cloud into the fog edge and into the end users. And we can see the end user is the immersive uh, service requester. Uh, it can be a hologram, VR, or any kind, you know, of, uh, you know, extended reality object, which is interact with other user in a 3D environment. We can also have the, we can, we have also the, the distributed edge server where, you know, the, we process the server and the federated averaging from the federated learning environment and the cloud where the cloud, you know, is responsible on ensuring 
of you know computing the blockchain uh, uh, you know users and ensure that whoever is accessed you know uh, this space or this you know service or this transaction is validated and you know uh, uh, through user. Uh, moving forward, what, what was our target here? Our target from the federated learning is the resource uh, orchestration uh, by providing collaborative tasks between the service and the edge end users uh, and to make decision based on the shared global load prediction model inside each cluster. So uh, here, every uh, end device, he, sh he uh, compute the local load and he share the workload uh, by index W and they calculate the estimate based on the analysis of the, of the, you know, the current load and the history loaded from a previous event that uh, loads in the server. And when it comes to the blockchain learning based edge nodes, uh, as I said, uh, in order for us to provide, you know, a trustworthy network, we have to ensure the user that the information provided and, you know, whoever has access to this network is a trustworthy uh, node. So here we are talking about distributed management supported uh, into, you know, uh, resource allocation with the storing details related to the computing in the cloud using the blockchain environment. So here, in order to satisfy that, we have two different applications that has been proposed for the distributed resource management. We have the task allocation, you know, algorithm, and we have the job relocation algorithm. So the users, the task is assigned to, to the users uh, in a distributed fashion you know, in uh, a real time and the job reallocation for every job that the user is trying to case is, is, is also adapted. So in case of someone who's leaving the networks, you should be able to react and assign someone else, you know, to provide, uh, you know, service for this task. Uh, the performance evaluation that we have used, uh, we have to implement a simulate environment at the same time. So uh, there is different, you know, uh, simulation uh, parameters and setups that we have used uh, similar to 500 by 500 uh, area. Uh, we uh, assume a 10 edge servers, a radius one kilometers. Uh, we have different type of sensors that has been used and different type of environments, you know, uh, to consider. Uh, and we propose four different type, you know, of, of matrices to, uh, to, to evaluate the random edge resource allocation. RRA, GRA, which is a greedy in, in uh, approach, naive approach, and we have a uniform approach, and we have the communication, our resource allocation, which is our, you know, a proposed system model. And after evaluating this model, we, we tested different type of matrices, like the, uh, the number of local iteration, the accuracy, the service hit ratio, and the effective of the end device overall hit ratio. And we can see from those environments or from those uh, simulation, that in most of the cases, we, we definitely increase the communication cost, but we are reducing, you know, the resource allocation and we are providing better communication aware resource allocation in our system. Another set of results we discussed in this paper as well is related to the learning delay ratio uh, on the CPU level and in the power consumption level. And we can see that uh, the level provided here, it's slightly similar in terms of percentage. And it's the learning mechanism here, it is provided in the, uh, in the proposed algorithm is high and, you know, substantial. Uh, here also we're talking about, we talked about the power usage ratio per uh, the bare edge server uh, as uh, the number of the devices increase. And we can see this is normal when we have more devices. Uh, so the resource allocation at the edge and the end devices has to be react, uh, you know, in, in the same manner. And uh, I'm happy to read, to read to the last uh, uh, part of the presentation today, which is the conclusion of what we have talked about. So the conclusion guys, we still uh, have, uh, you know, uh, a security issue in this environment. We still have a regulation and policies issues that we have to you know to tend to talk about with the regulator, with the decision maker, with the industry to come up into a framework and, you know, policies of how we can use this technology and how we can you regulate it. There is a huge concern at the communication reliability and how the current infra network infrastructure, you know, is enough to, you know, to satisfy the, this, uh, this environment. Uh, again, this is a new ecosystem and with any a new emerging ecosystem, this is requires a huge integration, you know, from different other subsystem in order to make it this, this new ecosystem successful. And we are still far from there. We are still into, you know, the building phases of a different, uh, you know, subsystem. Uh, this environment is highly depending on high speed communication without high speed communication, we would have lots of lagging and it will likely to fail. 
and also we have to revamp the whole, you know, uh, we have to revamp the whole understanding of quality of service, quality of the experience, and, you know, a traditional uh, service provider's mechanism while we are talking extended reality, quality of service, quality of the experience mechanisms. Uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, you know being with uh, me today in this presentation. Uh, I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm happy to you know to answer any uh, any question that you have, guys, from your side, or uh, talk about it uh, now uh, together. Thank you very much uh, for, uh, about your presentation, sir. And uh, I want to ask some questions about your presentation. Uh, we talk about uh, the network systems and the um, cybersecurity. And my question is, uh, what kind of vulnerabilities can occur in 6G network system in terms of cyber attacks? And what things should blue teams be cautious of or uh, red teams be aware of? Uh, okay, so definitely, I mean, uh, in, in the last slide, and during the slide, Demir, thank you for the question. Definitely, uh, this environment, I mean, it, it is very, it's hugely vulnerable into all type of attacks for so many reasons. It's a new environment. People or large scale people have not, you know, uh, witnessed or used this technology as of yet. So the expectation from this technology is not known. Okay, the, the new type of vulnerabilities definitely will arise and it will have to be tested. And, you know, it had to be, you know, uh, uh, at a system level uh, addressed, but definitely the security is a huge concern, the privacy and the trustworthiness in terms of cybersecurity, as you mentioned, those are very important. And it's still a huge interest from the community to look, to look into this new ecosystem, security perspective, security, privacy, trustworthiness, and and, uh, and and so on and so forth. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, as you said that the popularity of VR uh, has been increasing in the game industry and uh, a lot of game companies are investing um, about uh, VR and what kind of investments are they making about uh, VR technology? Okay, so now the most of the investment in the, in the in this new technology, it can be twofold. It is something related to the hardware level, which is uh, into the manufacture of this a new sensory or you know a new hardware that is reactive into this new environment. So the IoT sensor that we're talking about it, with, whether it's a racket or the head mounting display, or whether the sensors or the camera or the you know the Microsoft HoloLens, those are completely new hardware level. It is it has not been witnessed. So now, instead of sitting in front of a laptop and talking to a people, now the computer is it's, it's a virtual environment in in your eyes. And this virtual environment has to be cooperatively communicating with other virtual world called metaverse. So now the 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 industry are hugely investing in them the, in, on the manufacturer level of the satisfaction of this uh, hardware level. And the second, the second investment in the, in the consumer you know, perspective, perspective level, how the consumer is, uh, because this is, as, as you can see, this is a centric, uh, it's, it's centric uh, you know, uh, user environment. I mean, if, if the user is not in the environment, is not in, is not, he is not interactive, is not interested, so the whole, the whole technology will, you know, will fail. So the huge investment into the manufacture in, into manufacturing this technology at the first time, the first level, and into you know understanding how this technology needs to evolve, needs to be developed, and needs to be deployed, you know, in different areas, in different uh, in different environment. And the, there is one also a big gap uh, that needs to be considered into when we're talking about the current network infrastructure. Uh, is the current network infrastructure is capable, you know, to to react into the this huge, uh, big, you know, change or, or or is not? Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is, uh, as you said, that there are some hardware requirements in the use of six G technology, and uh, such as the increase of chip sizes. Uh, will this issue limit the use of six G on mobile phones in the future? Uh, honestly, I'm not sure, but what I know for sure right now that the new, uh, you know, hardware or system on chip industry, they are looking at what's of what so-called native AI. 
native AI that, you know, all, all of us, we know that AI, it's like a plugin and a play right now. It's a software based solution that can, it's like a USB stick, any type of application, any type of system, you can design an AI system in this and employ it in your system. But the new era right now that they're saying the AI should not be a software based, it should be also a hardware based. So when we design the hardware itself, we need to consider, you know, what, the, what they call intelligent on chip or uh, native intelligent, where the hardware itself has to be intelligent. Definitely, this is called for a complete, you know, change, you know, from the intelligent uh, hardware perspective, design, modeling, integration into the, the, the new system, uh, and so on. So the, the, the how this will, will change, I believe, uh, considering moving into micro level uh, 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 systems, this is will, will not have, uh, will not provide a huge change on the contrary, because people, they are eager to see more sophisticated devices and phones uh, in a small cap and in, in small sizes and, you know, uh, reachable uh, budget. So uh, we will see in a in, in couple of years, but definitely this is, this, 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 this will be an interesting, you know, uh, exploration, what we call the uh, native AI or, you know, intelligent hardware uh, design. Yes, thank you very much. And we have a question uh, from chat. Um, from your experience, Professor, how the privacy issues associated with metaverse uh, tech can be dealt and how challenging uh, is to build trust? It is very challenging, <laughs> to be honest with you. I mean, uh, definitely, first of all, because we don't have all the element of the metaverse world yet. Uh, people are still in the exploration phase, even myself and the researcher that I'm working with, who are still exploring this technology, who are trying to understand the challenges and the issues behind it. And before we are trying to first find the issues that need to, to be solved, first we have to experience the issues, we have to go into the phases of being hacked and being, you know, manipulated and being, you know, uh, fraud and to, into, to detect the loopholes into the cybersecurity or being uh, data manipulative and see the data driven solutions to, to, to design, you know, a solution for these issues. But definitely uh, it, it will be uh, a challenging because the community is still in the exploration phase in this environment. And that's why I believe this is a hot research area for people who are just starting their research study and their thesis study uh, and who wants you know, to find interesting issues and pinpoint and look into those, into those issues. Thank you very much. And next question is, there are some global problems such as energy war and economical crisis. How these problems affect this 6G? For example, could these issues delay the release of 6G technology? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, the, we have the 5G technology at the moment. Uh, I have experienced it myself in different lab, whether in Huawei or Qualcomm or here in Etisalat in Dubai. Uh, the, 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 the barrier actually, it is the, the infrastructure. So we have to uh, uh, make a huge change in the current networking infrastructure to make the 5G or the beyond 5G technology is available to all. Uh, now, the, now this change will call for a huge uh, cost, you know, uh, uh, loss in, in the network at the network operator side. That's why the, the movement into the, you know, deploying the 5G on a wide scale uh, is, is, is still slow. And relatively, this technology is not, you know, is not cheap. It is still expensive and it's still require a huge, you know, budget to make it available to all, you know, uh, 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 to wide category of, you know, the individuals. So uh, I believe uh, it's, it's the, I don't, I don't think, I don't see that the cybersecurity, cybersecurity it, it exists, it will never end. Uh, the uh, being vulnerable and being under attack and being, you know, uh, 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 under threat, this will happen whether with 5G, 6G or 10G from now. So the, 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 it is, if we want to be afraid from this, we will never, you know, come up with any new technology. We have just, you know, to work with what we have at our spaces. But in the contrary, uh, I mean, we, we invent new technologies like metaverse and like extended reality, like autonomous vehicle, flying drones. Uh, and then we experience what is the issues that arises at the security side. And we try to, you know, uh, fill those gaps and, you know, address those security issues on the go.
Thank you very much. And uh, what are the potential problems of software development for 6G engineers? I mean, um, recent language, uh, recent coding languages are uh, capable to uh, provide, capable to um, improve 6G. Uh, you mean the, 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 the language that required the different mm -hmm. kind of languages? Yeah. Okay, 6G technology, it's basically, uh, it, it's a communication technology, you know, it is, it, it's, it is two things, it is uh, basically coding environment, where you have to code the, uh, you have to increase your, uh, you have to increase your bandwidth and uh, increase your, uh, your uh, communication speed, and you have to reduce your delay, and you know, a native, uh, native communication environment, so it's a communication science, communication information theory science, and in the second part is the hardware level. What are the hardware that is capable to consume this bandwidth and provide this high-speed communication? That's why we have old generation phone that, that does not support 5G. And we have the new phone that you know, support 5G com, you know, communication uh, capabilities. So uh, now what are the, the testing environment for this? Definitely you know, the, the communication uh, uh, technology, IEEE 8 or 2.11.p, uh, those are the, you know, the, the wireless uh, technology and the 5G, I forgot which one, it is A or X, I cannot remember it right now, but all the development on the 6G technology, it's on this spectrum, the wireless uh, IEEE spectrum, from different, you know, uh, uh, big, uh, you know, gigantic, uh, tech, uh, you know, communication, uh, you know, uh, companies like Qualcomm, you know, and Huawei, and uh, wireless wave, for example, in USA and so on. So most of them, they are using MATLAB, of course, uh, with the new AI technique and tools using open sources and AI and Python. Thank you very much. Uh, my questions are done. And I want to say uh, thank you again uh, to accept our request. And thank you uh, for your presentation. And uh, I'm also wanted to say thank you to my uh, colleagues in IEEE Turkey chapter, uh, Computer Society. And uh, thank you for watching uh, our audience. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Emir, and thank you all for attending the presentation. And please, if you have any questions, uh, just Google my name and you will uh, find my email from my website. Send me any email. If you are looking for a collaboration or for an opportunity for a master or PhD study, or if you are looking even for postdoctoral or research assistant opportunity, we are open to hire. Please feel free to contact me or send me your CV and we will take it from there. Thank you very much and have a nice evening.